Praise be to God, my dear friends. This is Father Clay Hunt, the cowboy priest. And I want to tell you that I love you very, very much. And in the midst of this depraved and crooked generation, that's why it is all the more necessary for us to stay close to God. And as I have told you often, and it is absolutely true, that's in the liturgy of Holy Mother Church. The Lord speaks to us first and foremost with Himself, the Word, Verbum Domine, the Word of God, Christ Jesus in His flesh and blood, that's our food to give us strength in the midst of the journey, in the trials of this life. And it's absolutely true that we're in the worst trial. And if it's any consolation to you, we're all in the same boat. We're in the midst of this tempest together. And that in itself is a consolation. But the greatest consolation is the Lord is with us. The Lord is in the boat. And that's why we have to stay in the boat. That's Holy Mother Church, the bark of Peter, where he feeds us with his word the Lord feeds us with His Word, that's Jesus Christ, and He feeds us with His Word. Those things that we're going to go through right now, the liturgy of the Word in the past few days, because it speaks to us in our time of need. It's our compass. It gives us direction. It gives us understanding. I hear people saying all around, you know, how could this be? How could this happen? How could these things happen? How is it possible? That these things are happening in the world, in the church. How? Well, the Lord gives us light and insight. That's why it's so important for you to go to the Holy Mass. And obviously that's on Sunday. <laughs> obviously it's the Sunday Mass. That's the third commandment to keep holy the Lord's Day. So if we, if we miss the Holy Sunday Mass, we're absolutely in the... We're absolutely lost. We're aimlessly being tossed about by the raging worlds of this sea. But the greater wisdom, the higher wisdom, I was just communicating with a friend of mine whom I love. I call him Breakdown. He's a motorcycle mechanic and he's an awesome dude, or as some would say, a righteous dude. And He is the one who, you know, encourages me to be faithful to God in these difficult times. He's the one who, who pushes to be faithful and desires to be faithful. And, you know, he talks to me about the hardship of these times, the unbelievable realities of these times. But we keep pushing forward. And he goes to the Holy Mass on his motorcycle. I'm so proud of him. And it has to be in the same way for us. Nothing can separate us, I often say, from the sacramental life of Holy Mother Church. Nothing of this world or out of this world. Because that is the only pillar that we have to hold on to. And that's why I encourage you to understand that and to listen to what is revealed to us by God in these last few days, in the midst of these days when the whole world is thrown into confusion, when even when it should be where we have direction, most sure it fails us. That's very disheartening. It's very disheartening when that which we trust the most is leading us astray. And that's why we go to the surest thing, which is the Lord Himself and those things that belong to God. So let's listen from the Book of Wisdom. This is from Monday, a few days ago. Monday in the 32nd week of Ordinary Time from the Holy Mass. Love justice, the Lord says, you who judge the earth, Think of the Lord, 
in goodness and seek Him with integrity of heart. That's why your hearts have to be with integrity. You have to be people who are integrated to the Lord because He is found by those who seek Him integrity of heart. He is found by those who test Him not. And He manifests Himself to those who do not disbelieve Him. That's why you must believe. Or as the sacred author would say, do not be unbelieving, but believe. And actually those words came from the mouth of Jesus Himself. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. You know, I, I received a message from a woman who opined and saying, I'm tired of defending the Catholic Church. I'm just going to turn to the Lord Himself. And that's absolutely ridiculous. That's a, that's a, a false premise in the argument that she's making. Because if we turn our back on the covenant, we turn our back on the Lord Himself. In other words, he will not be able, we will not be able to find Him anywhere else in the world. He is with us in the Holy Eucharist. And that's why even if we have to swallow many nasty things, we never let us, ourselves be separated from the sacraments of Holy Mother Church. Even if we have to listen to a jack wagon saying foolish things, we never allow that to separate us from taking the Holy Communion. Because He manifests Himself to those who do not disbelieve Him. And here is the consolation that you can take. Listen to these words. For perverse counsel separate a man from God and from His power. Put to proof rebukes the foolhardy. Because into a soul that plots evil, <coughs> wisdom enters not, nor dwells she in a body under debt of sin. And that's why even in leadership, you know, there are these leaders in the world, in the church, and they are sinful men. And therefore, it is no surprise that their counsels are wicked, that their counsels are erred, that they say things that aren't true to God because they do not possess God. And that makes it difficult for us to stay in the boat. But we have to be more mature in our faith to God. We have to be in fullness of maturity to understand these things. And that in fact, we can persevere as faithful Christians to God. For the Holy Spirit of discipline flees deceit. That's why even if they talk, about, I know this guy that's such a jerk. He's constantly invoking the name of the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come, he says. <laughs> come Holy Spirit, come. But he is absolutely void of the Holy Spirit because he is a man of deceit. And he is one to whom much has been entrusted. But I don't, be, I don't abandon the Lord because of the bad behaviors of this man. And nor should you, for the bad behaviors of any man, abandon to the Lord. That's what is necessary for you to understand. And to be able to see that it is right and true that they are void of the Holy Spirit because they do not follow the ways of the Lord. And therefore... They try to convince us of everything of the spirit of the world because they belong to the spirit of the world. Or as the Lord Himself told them, you follow your father. And they said, our father is Abraham. <laughs> Jesus told you are sons and daughters of the father of lies. That's the devil. And that's why they do what they do, why they say what they say, why they act as they act.
For the Holy Spirit withdraws from senseless counsels, and when injustice occurs, it is rebuked. For wisdom is a kindly spirit, that's the Lord. Yet she acquits not the blasphemer from the guilt of his lips. That's why these blasphemers have no part in the Holy Spirit. Because God is the witness of his inmost self and the sure observer of the heart of man and the listener to his tongue. That's why when they speak of many of these guys, and I've told you before, and it's true, they're homosexuals. And it is, it is unthinkable what they speak when they think that they are in, in places that no one hears when they speak to each other. But in fact, the Holy Spirit does hear. The Lord knows all things. And their very words, these blasphemers, will be the ones to convict them. The Lord who listens to their wicked tongues. For the Spirit of the Lord fills the world, and He is all-embracing and knows what man says. If any of you imposters are listening, I don't believe you have the ability for conversion because you're so wicked. You're so set in your wickedness. And I have seen that demonstrated in your lives. I would rejoice if you had conversion. I would rejoice if you wicked men had conversion, but I don't believe it's possible. I believe you're so, you're so given into it already that it is inescapable for you. But if you were to, that would be wonderful. But let it be known even to you and your wickedness that the Lord knows what you say. And the psalmist says, Guide me, O Lord, along your everlasting way. That's the psalm from Monday. That's why you need to go to the Holy Mass to hear these beautiful things. Guide me, O Lord, along the everlasting way. That's a plea to God. That's a magnificent plea to God. You should be the one there present at the altar of the Lord to say with your own mouth these words, that the Lord may be the one to hear the cry of your appeal. Listen to the words of Psalm 139. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. This is you speaking, the people of God who cry out, the people of God who are in disbelief and confusion. These are your words, and you should be there to say them at the altar of the Lord. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. Absolutely, the Lord knows all things. He knows even to the number of the hairs on your head. And I say to the Lord, you see that cowboy's losing his hair? <laughs> I say, Lord, I don't even know the number of hairs on my head as they are constantly decreasing, but I know you know them. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize, Lord. With all my ways you are familiar. Even before a word of my tongue, behold, O Lord, you knew the whole of it. Because before you formed me in the womb, you knew me, Lord. That's why abortion is so wicked to God. He knows the little ones even before they are formed in the womb. They are precious to Him. And that's why we have to fight against foolishness, like the foolishness they did recently in Ohio. I attribute it to voting machines manipulating the votes and also for the lack of solicitude of God's people to be militant to the things of the Lord. They will be accountable and so will they. Behind and before you hem me in and your hand rests upon me, O Lord, what great confidence I have in the Lord. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me too lofty for me to attain. How magnificent you are, O Lord! Where can I go from your Spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If, if I sink to the nether world, you are present there. If I take the wings of the dawn, and if I settle in the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me. 
and your right hand hold me fast. Blessed be the Lord. And that you may take consolation and confidence to God. Listen to the words he said of these wicked religious leaders on the Holy Gospel from Monday, from the Gospel of Luke. Right on time you are, Lord. Right on time you are for the need of your people. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause sin will be, will inevitably occur. Things that cause sin will inevitably occur. So these things that these wicked men are doing cause many people to sin. Like that woman who told me she's tired of defending the Catholic Church. That means she's going out of the church. Or I told her that would be the most foolish thing you ever did to go out of the church. That would be the most foolish thing that you ever did. Because that's the number one desire of the enemy, the devil. By whatever means, by whatever means, to separate the human person from the covenant to God. By whatever means. And there are many, because of the bad behaviors of these men in high places, who are caused to sin. Many who are caused to sin. But we can't allow that. We can't allow their bad behaviors to cause us to sin. I remember when I was serving with my parishioners. That's the men in white in prison. And I love those guys. And it was just after, shortly after the summer of shame when those <clears throat> scandals came out of, about Cardinal McCarrick. That guy's a terrible guy. And there are many guys like him. Homosexuals perverted men, wicked men in high places. And so I go into the prison and these guys are there and we, we always, I hear their holy confessions and then we celebrate the Holy Mass together, the holy sacrifice of our salvation. And so I go in and they said uh, they, were, they were in a defensive posture. And I told them, what's going on, guys? And they said, we're not going to be Catholic anymore. We're going out of the church. I said, what are you talking about? They said, we heard those things that these guys are hypocrites. The church leaders are hypocrites, they said. I was like, oh, what happened? They said, well, we heard about those things about Cardinal McCarrick. And they didn't do anything. They swept them under the rug. You know, so... That's not acceptable to us. So that's why we're not going to be Catholic anymore. I said, really? I'm going to tell you guys a few things. And I explain to them often and always, as I do to you. And it is absolutely true. What, what is it that defines relationship to God? Covenant. And so I took them through the covenants of old, which was only proper to Israel. They were the only ones who were ratified in the covenants to Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, and so on. They were the only ones who belonged to God in that relationship of all the peoples in the whole world. That's what distinguished them from the Gentiles. But by the mercy of God and the love of God, that covenant relationship was extended, in fact, to the Gentiles, to us to every people and nation and race and tongue. And that is singularly what defines relationship to God. So I explained this in depth to those men. And I told them, what about you? Aren't you hypocrites? Look at you. And I pointed them, murder, thief, adulterer, drug dealer, and every other kind of wicked thing you can imagine. What about you? You're just as much a part of the body of Christ as any cardinal or bishop or pope. You're the body of Christ. What if I look at you and say, these guys are hypocrites. That's why I'm going out of the church. I told him, no. Father Clay will never go out of the church for the bad behaviors of any man. Father Clay will never leave Christ because of Judas. 
Father Clay will never leave Christ because of a dude named Jose or Manuel or Stephen. <laughs> no, I told him no. I will never go out of the covenant to God because of your bad behavior or the bad behavior of any man or woman for that matter. Because there's a lot of bad behaving women in our time, especially in this time. There are more bad behaving women than, than men who are numbered among bad behaving in our time. Women have lost their mind in large part. I know many women who are the most beautiful of all creation, holy women. But I also know women, many, many women who are godless Jezebels in our time. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I told him, Father Clay will never go out of the covenant to God for any bad behavior. And they were looking at me and they said, at length, they said, uh, neither will we, Father. Let's have the Holy Mass. I said, all right, let's get it on. <laughs> Praise be to God. But that's why the Lord says to these wicked men, woe to the one through whom the sin of others comes to occur. Woe to the one who is the cause for these sins. That's why Cardinal McCarrick, wicked man as he is, will be far more responsible to God than just for his own personal perversion of sin. He will be responsible to God for the wounds of faith that came to countless numbers of people who went out of the church because of his bad behaviors. And so will those accusations be leveled to these wicked men who are in leadership in this very time, in November of 2023. They are numbered among the worst of sinners. Far greater are their offenses to God than any of those murders, thieves, drug dealers who are numbered among my parishioners. Their offenses far so surpass the offenses of those men, offensive as they may be, exponentially more offensive to God will be the burden of accountability upon these wicked, wicked false shepherds. So that you may take confidence in knowing what the Lord says of these kind of men. It would be better for you if a millstone were put around your neck and to be thrown into the sea than to cause one of these little ones of mine to sin. That was in the liturgy on Monday. So if you would have gone to Mass on Monday, you wouldn't be losing your mind to these bad things. Crying out and wailing out and, and mindlessly doing things. But instead, you would be in the firm understanding to God and trusting to the Lord and holding firm even in the midst of every affliction like Christ Jesus himself to the will of the Father to walk on the Via Dolorosa. And I hope that in fact you do just that. That you repent to God and that you assure to the Lord, I will never leave you, Lord. Where else would I go? You have the words of eternal life. Be on guard then. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And we have the responsibility to rebuke the sinner. They are saying over there in Rome, you know, it's okay to be a transgender. It's okay to be a God parent, even if you're transgender. What the heck kind of craziness is that? Lord have mercy. The millstone is waiting for those guys. We have to rebuke the sinner, to admonish the sinner in love and in truth, because there is nothing else than love and truth. And we have to continue to cry out, even if we are rejected, even if we are rejected by those who love us the most or whom we love the most. 
those who are closest to us. And even as I often say to the stranger, don't be afraid to proclaim the gospel of the Lord as you are mandated from your baptism, you are a prophet. Therefore, the Lord says, rebuke the sinner. And if he repents, forgive him. That's why I'm saying if anyone in authentically repents, even to these wicked, false shepherds, we would embrace it. But they are unrepentant. But if they were to repent, or if anyone repents in authenticity, we should forgive them. And if he wrongs us even seven times in one day and repents, turns saying I'm sorry repents we are bound to forgive them I was just talking to a woman earlier you know deeply wounded by the offenses of her husband and saying I don't know if uh, it's possible I'm thinking you know maybe God wants me to get a divorce I told her woman don't think crazy don't allow such crazy things to even enter into your mind, lest they seize upon you, unless it come to be in that way. For marriage is holy to God. How many priests or how many people who profess themselves to be Christians would be telling other people, yeah, it's already time for you to leave. You know, you should be the one to walk out of your marriage. You don't deserve this. <laughs> What was it whenever they told to the Lord to throw off his cross? He told him, get behind me, Satan. And that's the same thing you should tell anyone who would offer such foolish counsel. And especially if it's a priest. You should slap that priest. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And I hope you say to the, with the same words from your own mouth, increase our faith, Lord. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it would obey. How wonderful and magnificent and powerful is the Lord. And then we move forward to today, where the Lord continues to give us insights to the darkness, the encroaches against us light itself comes to us i hope you go to the holy mass today as i promise you i will <laughs> father clay hadn't missed the holy mass one single day in more than 20 years because i know especially i know my poverty and that's why i absolutely need the lord sinner as i am poor as i am i know that's why i have to go to the holy mass every day to eat the bread of life of which Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, I live in you and you in me. And I will raise you on the last day. I trust to the promises of the Lord. And that's why I will be celebrating the Holy Mass shortly. From the book of wisdom, it says, admonition to those who are given responsibility over others. That's to you jokers. You jokers, it says, Hear, O kings, and understand, learn, you magistrates of the earth's expanse. <laughs> learn, hearken, you who are in power over the multitude and lord it over throngs of people. That's you. Whether you sit on high seats in Jerusalem or in Baltimore, these words are for you. Because authority was given to you by the Lord. The sovereignty by the Most High. Who shall probe your works and scrutinize your counsels. Because though you were ministers of his kingdom. You judged not rightly. And did not keep to the law. Nor walk according to the will of God. You wicked men. Tremble. And swiftly and terrible shall the Lord come against you because judgment is stern for the exalted. For the lowly man be pardoned out of mercy. That's like those guys that I serve in prisons 
The lowly will be pardoned out of mercy, but the mighty shall be mightily put to the test. For the Lord of all shows no partiality, nor does he fear greatness. <laughs> Some of these guys in their arrogance, they think they're so great. The Lord disdains them. I'm telling you, when you see those wicked guys, there is nothing more repugnant to the Lord than their, than their stinky backsides. They are wicked, wicked men to the Lord. These guys that we are burdened with in our time. Because he himself made the great as well as the small and he provides for all alike. But for those in power, a righteous scrutiny impends. And that's why you don't have to be, you know, so disconcerted. As if these wicked men will get away with their bad behaviors. Yes, your hearts are burdened. Yes, they are heavy. Yes, you have to cry and to pray even more. Do not become wearied. Trust to the word of God. All things will be put into order. And in fact, even as the, the passing of the days becomes more heavy, I recognize to the Lord, I say to the Lord, all the more sweeter will be the day of vindication when you, when you bring it forth, Lord. And that's absolutely true. And that's why I want you to understand in that way. To you, therefore, the Lord levels this account against them, O princes, princes of the world, princes of the church. Are my words addressed to you that you may learn wisdom and that you may not sin? <laughs> Lord, it will be an amazing miracle if those guys turn from their sin. I will praise you forever for that too, Lord. I always praise you. That will be that will blow my mind if these guys come to conversion. <laughs> they are so wicked. For those who keep the holy precepts hallowed shall be found holy, and those learned in them shall have ready a response. And that's why I do want you to be holy. I want you to be in possession to these wisdoms. Desire therefore my words, long for them, and you shall be instructed. Praise be to God. And the psalmist for today, our very words rise up, O God, bring judgment to the earth. Come, Lord Jesus. Every day that passes, I tell the Lord in my prayers, it seems to me like that's a day too long. But I defer to your judgment, Lord. <laughs> That's what I tell God every day. Defend the lowly, please, Lord, and the fatherless. Those little ones, as you call them, the Anawim. Render justice to the afflicted and to the destitute. Rescue the lowly and the poor. Those who cry out, Lord, those who are so thrust into the deep waters of unknowing. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. And I said, the Lord said, you are gods and all of you sons of the Most High. Yet like men, you shall die and fall like any prince. That's why we have to understand. We will all die. We all have to walk the Via Dolorosa. And that knowledge gives us strength to take one more step. Or as the old saying goes, one day at a time. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus. Or my thing is, one step at a time. Sweet Jesus. Because how many steps in a day? Check your Apple Watch. What did you walk like? 14,000, 20,000 steps? A day is a lot of steps. And the oppression of these days should not be measuring measured in days, but in steps, one step at a time, sweet Jesus. And how was it that the psalmist said in year two, we're in year one, but in year two, the psalm was, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. It is fitting for us to revisit those words of the psalmist and to have them imprinted upon our hearts, even imprinted in blood. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want in verdant pastures. He gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul, he guides me in the right paths. I fear no evil for his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. Your rod and your staff that give me courage, O oh Lord, you spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. That's the Holy Mass. That's the Holy Mass, Lord, we praise you. We praise you for the Holy Mass. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil and my cup runneth over. Only goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Amen. That's the substance of sentiment of the heart of Father Clay, the little cowboy. And what does the Lord say in the Holy Gospel for today? From the Gospel of St. Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, there were ten lepers that met him. They stood at a great distance from him and raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. See, he instructed them to the covenant to Moses. Go show yourselves to the priest. Follow the ways that the Lord has established. And that's the same way to us. What a great wisdom. That's why I tell you, go present yourself to the priest. Go show yourself to the priest. Because the holiness or lack thereof of the priest is not what affects the grace. The Lord himself, wisdom itself, wisdom personified. The Holy Spirit is the one who forgives your sin. The Holy Spirit, even if you receive the Eucharist at the hand of a wicked man, it does not diminish the efficacy of the Eucharist. The grace is fully potential to come to you, even despite the holiness or lack thereof of the minister. And that's why you can never stop going to Mass. Present yourself to the priest, the Lord said. And that's why you do have, that's why you have to also. That's why you have to also. That's why I'm telling you, be wise beyond the world. Be wise in the things of the Lord. Present yourself to the priests, Jesus told them. And as they were going, they were cleansed. As they were going, they were cleansed. You see? You see how the Lord works? He's the one who sees these little things to the human person, to you and I. And that's why what determines our life to God is to be faithful to these things. Not any other way. And one of them, realizing that he had been healed, turned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. And that's why you see these things. I see a lot of people in the world, and many of them who do not belong to the covenant, but even though they are saved through the covenant, through the grace of the covenant that comes like a blanket over the whole world, they are saved by that grace, even though they do not belong to the covenant. Because in fact, the Lord sees the heart and the mind of the human person. We are mandated to proclaim the covenant. And unlike those jack wagons who told the young people, we are not here to, to bring people to Jesus Christ. They told them that at World Youth Day. Man, I would like to pull a quirt or a bull whip on those guys. Ridiculous, ridiculous, blind leaders of the blind. And even worse than that, they are numbered one among those whom the heaviest millstones await that they told the youth that at World Youth Day. Jokers. But in fact, we are mandated to say even to the stranger and the foreigner the truth of the faith, the covenant new and everlasting. But judgment is ultimately to God. 
we are called and mandated to insist to people the necessity to be in the covenant. But in the end of all things, God alone is the judge. And there are many who belong in the covenant who will, who will lose eternal life because of their wickedness. Much has been entrusted to them and much will be required. And there are many who are outside of the covenant who will be lost most probably because of their lack of solicitude to the covenant. But even in God's mercy, I believe there will be many who are pure of heart and pure of good intention that even though by some reason they do not belong to the covenant, they will even be numbered among the greatest in the kingdom of heaven because God alone is the judge. But we, sh we straight up make it our business to proclaim the covenant to anyone who will listen and even those even to those who try to close their ears. So this foreigner, a Samaritan, came to Jesus, and Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go, for your faith has saved you. God bless the Lord. And God bless to you. I hope that you can understand these things and that you can draw strength from them. And I hope that you engage to the fight. Because just like all the holy ones who have gone before us, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Joan of Arc, all those are women, by the way. St. <laughs> John Henry Newman that we recently celebrated. St. Albert the Great, a holy bishop to God that we celebrate today. We are bound and mandated to be faithful to God in our own person and to the degree that it is possible to us to proclaim it, even from the rooftops. I hope that you're faithful to God and that even for all the discouragement, it would not discourage you, that you would respond to the grace of these last days to be in fact a saint to be very holy to God even though those words may be terrifying to you to be a saint that's what we're called to and these bad behaviors should push us to that very end the Lord be with you and through the intercession of the holy saint Albert the great bishop of our Lord Jesus Christ priest of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the intercession of those courageous holy women of days gone by. May Almighty God bless to you and yours the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Adios. Bye.